Ladies and gentlemen, let me read my long title to you and then tell you what I will cover and what I will not cover. Extremism versus rationality or progress versus stagnation. So this part of my title I read as dealing with government policy. I'm not really interested in the irrationality of Jovic or the Front National in France, which is a little bit closer to power than any other extremist party. I'm much more interested in the lack of rationality of mainstream politicians, for example, François Hollande or Angelica Merkel, to name just two of those who are likely to do much more to ruin the European idea than Jovic will ever have a chance to do. The subtitle of my presentation is What direction will our countries take after the European election? And my prediction is very simple. Whatever the result will be, it will make no difference. The European Union has become a cartel or a trade union of governments united against younger Europeans and nothing more. And this cartel will continue. They will not do the necessary reforms and I remind you of that letter from the French student to François Hollande. I think this is typical of what politicians in all European countries are doing to people who look as young as you do for the benefit of my generation. So essentially my argument is that early European integration, economic integration and the four freedoms has been useful and beneficial and even promoting peace or the avoidance of war in Europe. Since about 20 years, since the 1990s, Europe is on the wrong track. And our politicians do not admit it. And before they admit that we are on the wrong track, there is no hope for change for the better. Essentially, I will use a kind of psychological frame of reference. My argument boils down to saying that the European Union, since about two decades, rests on three pillars. Pillar number one, illusions. Pillar number two, perverse incentives. Pillar number three, a lack of transparency. This is the Europe which our politicians built. And I do not worry about so-called extremists. I worry about the Hollande's, the Merkel's, the Berlusconi's and whatever their names might be. Let me start with illusions. I think the Euro and the Eurozone has been built on five illusions. Illusion number one is Mediterranean Europe does not need devaluations anymore. In the decades before the introduction of the Euro, we had regular devaluations in countries like Italy, Greece, Spain, even in France against the Deutsche Mark. And it's an illusion to believe that this will no longer be necessary in future. The second illusion was, it's hard to believe how anyone could be so stupid ever to entertain this illusion, but some European politicians believed that the introduction of the euro by itself might trigger reforms. It did not happen. If, for example, a country like Italy had used the savings in interest rates after the introduction of the euro, then public debt in Italy would be 100% of GDP less than it is today. 
then it would be 30% now instead of 130% of GDP. So, reforms were conceivable, but they did not happen. The third illusion is that the welfare state remains viable in grain societies. Sometimes politicians talk as if they had insights. Miss Merkel has been credited in the American periodical Foreign Affairs as well as in the British periodical The Economist by the insight that Europe accounts for 7% of the global population, 25% of the global output, but 50% of the transfer payments and that this cannot go on forever. About half a year later, she joined a grand coalition with the socialists in Europe. And what she, did she do? She introduced a minimum wage. She reduced the retirement age from 65 or 67, it depends on some legal details, to 63. And she topped up transfer payments. So, occasionally, politicians sound reasonable. What they do is usually the opposite. They act as if they believe that grain societies can survive the welfare state forever. Illusion number four was the assumption that government bonds are safe. And this does not only refer to German government bonds, but it also applies to Greek government bonds. Illusion number five is that some economies like Germany are thought to be strong enough to rescue others. At the very latest, we will recognize that this has been a fallacy once France and Italy needs help. And I don't think that this point of time is further than five years ahead of us. It might be much earlier. The second pillar of current European policies are perverse incentives. Incentive number one is a tradition in all European welfare states. Welfare states cannot avoid a perverse reinforcement pattern. If you are in need, you will get transfer payments. A psychologist would say you are reinforced or rewarded for being in need. But if you are economically successful, you are punished by tax payments. And the more successful you are, the worse the punishment gets under transfer, under progressive taxation. Pillar number two, perverse incentives. Item number two is parents are dissuaded from teaching their children to work hard. Because if your children happen to have only average talents and intelligence, it doesn't really make that much difference whether you live on transfer payments and a little bit of employment in the black economy or whether you hold a regular job. So there is no incentive for parents to teach their children to work hard. Item number three, welfare states promote the emigration of high achievers and the immigration of welfare recipients. We covered that just an hour before. Item number four, subsidies mitigate what Josef Schumpeter called creative distractions and what others call the structural readjustment of the economy. And this kind of mitigation is not desirable. Item number five, policies to rescue the euro imply building a European tier of the welfare state. And if we are, if we live in a welfare state on a track to bankruptcy, the last thing which you want to do is to build the second or European tier of the welfare state. And this second or European tier implies that 
governments are rewarded for policy errors. Here I want to quote my favorite sociologist, by and large, sociologists are loony left, and it's good not to listen to them, but there has been a good British sociologist in the late 19th century. He wrote an essay on money and banking, and according to him, the ultimate effect of shielding men, and I would add politicians, from the effects of folly is to fill the world with fools. We are on the way to a Europe of fools, and our leaders are leading the way. The third pillar of current policies is a lack of transparency because governments in creditor countries know that their voters would disapprove the policies if voters in countries like Germany could really understand what our government is doing to us. Not to my generation. I have a chance to die before the worst will come. But to people of your generation. If European countries like Germany are expected to help needy countries like Greece, there is a transparent way to do it, and there is another way to do it. A transparent way to do it would be a gift. You give money, the richer country gives money to the poorer country and never expects it to get anything back. That would be a transparent way. But our politicians do not dare to do it because voters would understand what they do. Now we do it in a highly intransparent way. Nobody except a few specialists <coughs> understand it and our politicians get the way of it. Not all of the rescue measures benefit countries in need like Greece. Much of Northern European taxpayers' money has actually gone to big investors, including big banks, global players, and all these poor hedge funds. Angela Merkel would never admit that she asks German taxpayers to support global hedge funds, but this is what some of the German taxpayers' money does. Only people who are close to communism in Germany see this fact. And this is a kind of degeneration of so-called conservative and liberal parties in continental Europe. Unfortunately, none of the three pillars of Eurozone policy making is likely to disappear after the European election. Our politicians will continue until they have ruined the chances for prosperity for the next generation. I stand a chance to die in time. In time. Most of you don't. Thank you for your attention.